Welcome to the Evening Review. My name is Juan Klache. Before we go into today's interview, let's have a look at the headlines. Swakop completes $7 million road project. No test for vexed tourist industry urges. Shifeta reveals tourism plans for 2022. Swakop uranium employees up in arms over bonus. Welcome to the Evening Review, Charles. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Fine, fine. Um, we've just seen that uh, the Kasane Magistrate Court has ruled, has ruled uh, into the inquest involving members of the Botswana Defense Force that they have done no wrongdoing as far as the shooting of the Inchindo brothers as well as their cousin is, is concerned. What is your reaction to the ruling? It's an unfortunate situation. And uh, a dark chapter in the history of uh, Zambezi uh, Namibia Life Matters uh, that uh, things of this nature happened. In actual sense, the BDF have been given a blank check by the presiding officer that they can shoot to kill and to be defended. So this is an unfortunate situation that has just happened. Um, in terms of the ruling now that was just given, um, to members, uh, to Namibians living alongside the borders or that, 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 that live along the border of Namibia and Botswana, uh, what is the likely impact of this in terms of how, how, how people will now approach fishing in, in the Zambezi and Chobe rivers and, um, uh, and, 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 and their lives in general? Um, you know, how, what, what, what is the likely psyche of people going to be now with regards to what has just uh, with, the, with the ruling? I should think um, it, it's like the Honorable Governor once said that um, the people living along Chove River, they live in fear. In other words, security. There's no security. Security is the absence of threats. So with now the magistrate glorifying the killers that they did a good job, the people living alongside the border with Botswana, they are now living in extremely fear situation that the end time they can be gone down then the, the courts in Busano is going to to defend them. My advice to them is just abstain. Abstain from fishing, <laughs> abstain from uh, fetching grass, abstaining from uh, uh, ripping um, reeds, abstain from grazing your cattle at the riverside, abstain from everything because everything belongs to Botswana. That's what it is. So if you go there, you risk the chances of losing your life again. As usual, they will shoot you at the Namibian side and pull your body on the Namibian and Botswana side. And there they're saying you crossed over illegally, just like the way they did with the Jindo brothers. They were murdered in Namibia, taken their boat to Botswana, and saying they've entered the territory of Botswana without a passport, which is not true. Um, so it's quite an uh, unpredictable situation. And the threat from Botswana or the security situation is very volatile and shaky. As you know that people of Zambezi are not protected in any way. We have NDF and the Marine alongside the Chove, but they're just there to patrol in like tourists, not really doing anything. We don't want to war. All we want is just to be secured, to feel at home when we are home not being killed day and night, and those who are supposed to protect us, they are in the parks doing nothing. 
Um, I want to ask now, since you've mentioned uh, the Namibia Defense Force, ever since they have been assigned to jointly um, uh, monitor the situation um, in the Zambezi region, has there been any consultation with the Namibia Defense Force and, 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 and by extension the Namibian police to ensure the safety of Namibians as far as um, fishing and grazing um, along the border is concerned? Not that we know of from Namibia Life Matters, because most of these uh, trips and discussions we are always excluded for whatever good reason I don't know. But uh, those people that are busy, like uh, those people alongside our members, and uh, most of them they informed us that uh, there hasn't been no con uh, consultation with the security forces uh, with them. Only the National Council of Namibia. The Standing Committee on Security, that's the only committee which went to sensitize and see them and consult them on the border security issues. But as far as NDF is concerned, the Minister of International Relations is concerned, Home Affairs is concerned, uh, according to our members who are based that side, there has been no consultation in any way. Apart from just telling them, stay away from Situngu, leave your crops, now belongs to Botswana, let's wait and see, that's all. And then you also mentioned that now uh, this effectively means that uh, uh, mem members of the Botswana Defense Force have now given um, free reign to act uh, as they see fit. Can you elaborate? Um, what are the incidences that you have seen occurred um, since the shooting, the fatal shooting of the four men? Have there been incidences where members of the Botswana Defense Force would come into Namibia and intentionally intimidate? Um, locals, um, you know, just mention one of uh, some of the things that you, you've you heard of or have seen or experienced personally. Just after the shooting of the Chindo brothers, a week thereafter, a helicopter was seen over in that side of Kapani from B for BDF. Uh, there was also tourist, uh, Namibian tourist, Namib uh, tourist who had the Namibian side being pointed the gun by the BDF. So these people won't stop. And then, and, uh, yes, 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 Charles? Yes. And to make, make matters worse, that uh, from our Namibian side, we don't seem really to care about what is happening in Zambezi region. I'm talking about government support and ensuring security for the people of Zambezi region. Why am I saying so? One, if you look at the, the legal counsel from Botswana side in that court, there were six prosecuting, um, six people, legal people from Botswana, at the, at the, at the, the legal counsel. But Namibia, it was only one, and that one person was even sitting in the uh, public gallery, the senior po public prosecutor from Namibia, was not even allowed to go and sit uh, at the legal counsel type of table and so on. That's number one. That shows serious lack of seriousness from the government of Namibia. We thank the Namibian police for the work that they have done in terms of investigation. There were a lot of limitations, but they were able to stand the ground and do their work. So we thank them for that. Secondly, uh, the political leadership of Zambezi region, that's the governor, chairperson of uh, the management committee, original council, the Chindo brothers, we thank them also for the work that they've done in terms of voicing out and speaking out for the people that they represent. That was really good. But the fact is, these are political leaders, not legal people. It's more like taking a, a netball player into a soccer stadium to expect him to go and score. You can't take the police to the battlefield. Take NDF there. So what we expected from government was send lawyers to Kasani, not political leaders. You see? But we thank them for their political will to be there to defend their community. And the other issue is that um, uh, the presiding officer during the proceedings made it categorically very clear that everything that BDF did was good. Apparently, they acted in self-defense against the Namibian fishermen who shot first. And according to their standard operation procedures, they retaliated and killed our brothers in Cold War. So apparently, if they could not have shot that the fishermen now, if they could have not shot at the BDF, nothing could have happened. They could have arrested them and speak to them and find out where they are going. That's what the presiding officer said. But again, the fact remains, if there were poachers, or if there were 
suspected poachers. Where are the guns? That could not be found in any way. And the other issue which uh, came through um, uh, the, uh, the proceedings is that um, we, we, the issue of BDF who shot, why were the guns and cartridges uh, not being brought before court as exhibition? The presiding officer said that there was no contest as to who killed the Chindo brothers. Uh, the BDF agreed that it's them who killed, and there was no need of them bringing the, the cartridges and the guns that were used to kill them to court. But the fact remains, there was con two contradicting inform information from the people who conducted the post-mortem. The Namibian doctor said they were shot at a close range, while the one for Botswana said they were shot at a long range. The Namibian doctor who did the post-mortem or observed the post-mortem said they were brutally tortured before they were shot. But then the Botswana side says they were not brutally uh, injured. Their body was just toward decomposition. That's why the body was turning green. So these were two contradicting information. The other party that we have learned from the court proceedings that uh, the doctor that the Namibian government sent to Botswana apparently was not qualified to do the work that he was expected to do. And the doctor who conducted post-mortem from Botswana was, had the qualification to do what he did. As such, the presiding officer used the report from the Botswana doctor to advance her judgment and threw away the Namibian one. What does that tell you? The government doesn't care about us. Why should they send somebody that's not qualified to do the work? Don't you have qualified people who can do post-mortem autopsy in Namibia? You see, all these are things which beg to be answered by the Namibian government. Are they really serious about the security of the people of Zambezi? Or is it just window dressing? Are you there? Yes, yes, I'm listening. Yes. So these are some of the things that we need to interrogate and look forward. The other issue which uh, came straight in the proceeding was that uh, the magistrate said it wasn't the issue of poaching, but the issue of shooting that she applied their mind on. Meaning, the issue of poaching is kind of irrelevant, was kind of irrelevant in terms of uh, judgment. But the issue of shooting is the one which she took into consideration, which is the one which led to the death of uh, the Chindo brothers. As to the cause of the death, according to what she said, is that uh, they were caused by multiple injuries sustained from the gunshots. That's what she said. But again, it's unfortunate that uh, the Chindo brothers are not here to speak for themselves. All we have is a version from BDF. Namibian side, there's no one who was there. The people were there, they are dead, buried already. So history is being written by somebody who is there, who is present, not the one who is absent. So Namibian side was more like allegation, allegation. And the Botswana side was like, we were there, this is what happened, this is what happened. There was no counter argument on what happened at the crime scene. Although Namibian security forces came, but they came a bit later, a day or two after the incident has happened, you know. So it's unfortunate that uh, the judiciary is covering up for the military. And the other issue, the issue of uh, the national security of Namibia, in my own view, is compromised, highly compromised. If you have a Namibian citizen spying on a fellow Namibian, giving information to a foreign government, and yet we are saying, uh, let us be quiet about it, let us protect the, uh, the informer because by law, blah, 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 blah. It's unfortunate. How many more information is going to be leaked from Namibia to go to Botswana? Hmm. Literally, the government of Botswana is at war with us already. Unless even the Namibian government is doing the same. But I doubt very much. And then Charles, yes. Um, 
what type of interventions um, going forward would you like government to, 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 to use to bring this matter to rest? Do you think that um, uh, we should probably take the matter further? Um, is there, do you see any ways to hold the Botswana Defense Force to, 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 to task over the incident? Um, what would you like to see happen? As of now, there's nothing the government can do, to be honest with you, because um, the issue of jurisdiction, if we have to appeal the verdict, it has to be appealed in Botswana. The same old song will be sung. That's point number one. So it will be wasting of our resources. Going forward, we expect the government of the Republic of Namibia, more especially the security sector, to take up the stand and defend the territory from exterior, external forces who are here to harvest Namibian life. Border control must be safeguarded. Secondly, we expect the Namibian government that one Namibian life lost is too much. The student went for 36, 37 people to die for them to stand up and defend. The other issue of saying we are we are friends to all and enemy to, to none does not exist. Because if we are friends with Botswana, why are they killing us? Or does the life of a Namibian living in Zambezi region doesn't matter? So going forward, I believe, um, I want to suggest that I want to recommend that government should really take up a stand and defend its citizens from external aggressors. As it is, only God cares about us. We do not want war. All we want is coexistence with citizens of Botswana. We have got more to share and win when we cooperate than when we fight each other. For example, if war breaks out now, with all gunshot and sound and everything, the animal that are trying to protect will all disappear within an hour. Then what next? Life will be lost, most especially us here. Normal situation is going to be disrupted. Buildings are going to collapse. That's what we want. Oh, we don't want that. We want coexistence of brothers. So we recommend that the government should really have a serious talk with the Botswana government. And when they do so, let movements like the Namibia Life Matters also be present, rather than just speaking this thing in boardrooms, air-conditioned and exchanging coffees and, um, you know, tea, without really having other people affected community. Thank you very much for joining us on the Evening Review, Charles. You're welcome. And that's that for Thursday's edition of the Evening Review. Do have yourself a good evening.